And tell me about your growing up. Uh, I grew up in Southern California. Um, I've been doing art since I was a little kid. I No one else in my family does art. I just sort of uh, gravitated toward it at an early age, so my parents kept putting brushes in my hand and giving me paints, and I did it all through uh, high school. Then I went to college at the University of California, Santa Barbara, where I got uh, an undergrad degree in fine art and also global studies. And the global studies really defi defined the content of uh, what I wanted to say in my artwork. Where did you do your global studies? Um, well, I did the undergraduate program at UC Santa Barbara, and then I also studied abroad for a year in Barcelona, doing both art and in their uh, attending their regular university for art history, history, sociology, um, and uh, cultural studies. How did you end up in Alpha? Um, I am here in Alva uh, as a, I am the first visiting artist as part of a new program at the university uh, to bring in artists from all different parts of the country uh, to live here and work here for a certain amount of time in order to have a dialogue with the students and also engage the community and bring uh, new artistic perspectives um, and share and, uh, and just, yeah. How are you dealing with Oklahoma compared to the coast? Um, well, uh, I f people here have been very welcoming. Um, the people I'm staying with have done a wonderful job of making sure to introduce me to people, help me um, really feel welcomed and participate in you know, uh, local events, and so uh, that's given me a really good opportunity to talk to people, and I feel that that really impacts the artwork that I make. It, it just, um, not sort of in an indirect way, you know, those experiences, those personal experiences um, affect how I think about the architecture, and I paint architecture as a way to talk about people, so when I know the people, um, that informs the artwork quite a bit. California doesn't have much snow, typically. No. Well, I have since moved to Seattle. I've been living in Seattle for about six years, um, which was a drastic change from San Diego. I have to say I was in San Diego over the holidays visiting family, and it was about 78 degrees. Perfect. Uh, it was pretty much felt like August. Uh, then I went back to Seattle. It's pretty cold in Seattle. And then I came to Alva and found out that here it can snow one day and be 70 degrees the next day. So that's very unique. <laughs> that's what I would say. So, so in the last six months, you could say I've had the whole run the gamut. <laughs> so it's, it's been an experience, and I'm definitely adapting to more variety. Very good. Now, do you have students at the university? Uh, the way that we've done it is um, Jay Yoshimoda is um, the head of the department and also teaches the classes. My studio space is um, inside the department, and so when he teaches classes, then he brings the students in to talk to me on a regular basis, and I can discuss with them my ideas and my process, and so then I try to make myself very accessible for any kind of questions or information, and so in that way, it's more of an ongoing conversation than a specific lecture or project. So hopefully that's keeping it a little less formal. We'll make it um, more accessible to the students and they'll feel comfortable uh, kind of speaking with me and also uh, letting that information, taking that back with them to influence their own artwork. How long will you be here? Um, this is the end of my six-week tour. So I'm actually just here through the weekend for uh, the art walk and to wrap things up, and then I head home on Monday. How would you define your art to a layman? Because when I walked in up there and saw all the pretty ribbons and things, I said, this sort of looks like a Cub Scout tent that I camped in when I was little. How do you define it? Um, for, so my studio practice is two parts. I do painting and what I call installation art. And installation art usually uses found materials or 
unexpected materials and then reinvents them to become something new, something aesthetic. So what's wonderful about that is that by using certain materials, you can make associations just by virtue of the material, what that material makes people think of. So the burlap might make you think of a tent or the ribbon might make you think of a craft or... Um, and then, so the materials have that information already, then I can use it to create a completely different shape or form that's usually site-specific, so it responds to a very specific location, either in scale or the materials, um, to create a completely new dialogue of something else. And so in this case, I'm trying to make reference to the landscape. So I'm using ribbon and burlap and materials that would be very familiar and part of your everyday experience, but then in a way that's completely different and new that hopefully draws attention to both the materials and also the references. And so when I came here, I realized that the landscape is very kind of uh, flat and sloping. And I also, um, you know, the experience of driving on the highway, it's this very Americana experience that we all share, but also more in the region, it's very much a part of the everyday life. It's very much a part of the commerce, the farming, the, the uh, what's produced here. And that experience of driving on the highway is very unique. And I always remember when you pass by the crops, the way the perspective seems to shift and follow you and create this optical illusion. And so that was the inspiration for this piece was to use the ribbon in a way where the colors and the shapes really um, reference landscape in a very subtle way, but I'm also really trying to capture that sense of optical illusion that happens when you're driving in a car. And so the hope is is that people will interact with the piece by walking around it and through it, creating that optical illusion, but it also means that the viewer's active participation is necessary to make that piece actually whole. So there's a relationship there between the people seeing it and the ideas and the impressions and the personal experience they bring to interpreting the artwork um, in order to make that piece really have content. Do you expect to make a living with your art or do you expect to make a living with teaching? Um, I do art full time. Do you? I do art, um, I do teaching in workshops. I've done several workshops over the last year or two, but I've been doing art full time for um, going on my second year. And um, a lot of my, st so I have a studio in Seattle in sort of the industrial neighborhood in a complex with uh, many other artists, everything from industrial metalworking, woodworking, ceramics, painting, installation. And a lot of my projects throughout the year are actually public art projects. They're temporary art projects with grants through the city or private organizations. A lot of them happen during the summer because that's when people are really out and about. I've done large-scale installations um, in parks in Seattle, different neighborhoods. Uh, also, last summer I did a piece uh, in the main plaza in downtown Seattle. And then I also do painting in my studio, which I exhibit uh, both locally and nationally. When you leave money, are you going to leave back behind any broken-hearted cowboys? <laughs> no, I'm married, so I'm, oh. I'm going home to a broken-hearted husband, oh, okay. so I'm, I'm excited to see him. <laughs> yeah. Well, he will be glad to hear the end of this interview. Then. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, missed, missed the boat on the cowboys, okay. but um, yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, thank you.